welcome back once again to Jack's Tech Corner. I'm yours Jack and this is another Photoshop editing video tutorial. If you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel, please click the subscribe button today and you'll be notified when new shows are posted. Today we're going to learn how to take a single picture and turn it into an HDR. Now what is an HDR? We taught you this before. It's high dynamic range. But what we're going to do is we're saying you have a picture and you didn't do any bracketing. You just took one picture, you took it back, you put it into your organizer, your iPhoto, you opened it up and said, wow, I wish I would took three shots of that and bracketed, but you didn't. So let's go ahead and make our own HDR picture from one single JPEG. Now a special note here, it's better if you shoot these in RAW, but we're not always shooting in RAW. I shoot in JPEG as I'm sure you do also because we don't want to have to convert hundreds and hundreds of pictures. So if it's JPEG, we're going to go for it. Here we have a picture of a lonely old house dated back in the uh, 1700s or so, I think. Uh, it's probably more like the 1800s. Anyway, it's very old. What I'm going to show you here today is we're going to take this and we have to make three exposures out of this picture. Let's take the background right now and double click it to unlock it. With that done, we're going to go down to where it says create a new fill or an adjustment layer. Click on that and click on levels. With this, we're going to take our middle slider and slide it to the left. As you do that, you're going to notice your picture is becoming overexposed. That's what we're doing. We want to make a brighter picture because we need three different pictures. So I'd like to take this to about two something. Two, as close as I can get to two, it's 206, 205. Don't worry about it. Once you do that, let's go up to File and we're click on Save As. Here, I'm going to click on Desktop and I want you to create a new folder. Now either if you're on a Windows or a Mac, it doesn't matter. We all do this the same way. We click on desktop and then we click on HDR. Now click on format and you have to convert this picture to a JPEG. Not convert it, but we don't want to save it as a PSD. Go to the top and rename this picture. The only reason I renamed these is to keep yourself in order. Let's create this as high because this is our high exposure or very bright. Save this and save it as a large file format. And I say to do that because you want to have the most detail you can have when you're trying to create an HDR picture. Click on OK. Now, with that said, you go up here now, you click on edit and revert. Or, as I was showing you this earlier, I thought, well, there's another way we can do it. Let's just go down and grab this slider and pull it to the right without having to close anything and reopen them. I kind of like to take this to about 0 .040. And I'm talking right in the middle here, if you can see this. 0 .040, 0 .3839, somewhere in there they will work. Don't, don't really have to make it exactly. Now, we didn't have to revert at that time. That's what I was trying to show you here. I saved you a couple steps already. Let's go back up to File. And we're going to do a Save As. And as you can see now, we have an underexposed shot. Go back to your desktop. That HDR folder, this is very important. You might want to write that down because you have to know where these pictures are. JPEG. And this one we're just going to call low. And simply click save. And we'll click OK. Now we have that one. Now what you want to do is you want to go ahead and we're going to click on edit and revert. So what is this doing? Let me just step back one second and show you what this is doing. 
when we had a high exposure we had all the nice uh, wood here all lit up and everything was bright and nice in the back in the foreground but the background sky was kind of blown out now we make the lower exposure you can see we bring out a lot of shadows and and blacks and darks here but we also bring the sky down to make it more blue so that's why we need those particular pictures let's click on edit and revert now this is our normal picture so let's go to file save as go back to your desktop HDR change your format once again to JPEG and this time we're just simply going to take this picture and type in normal because this is our normal exposure this is what we normally shot it at and it's just a picture that we had click on save and again now you can see it's 13.1 megapixels that's fine just click on OK and save that out now now that we have those pictures let's go ahead and minimize Photoshop elements out of the way because we are done with that let's bring over HDR the folder it's on your desktop that's why I put it there it makes it easy to find open that up and now we're going to be using the program called Photomatics Photomatics allows us to take pictures and combine these into HDRs. So I clicked on the top one, and I'm sure you guys know how to use your computers, but I hold the shift key down and I left clicked on the bottom one, and that selects them all. You can right click, and again, on a Windows machine, if you right click on there and open with is not shown, hold your shift key down and then right click and you will see open with. Now you'll go down and click on Photomatics Essentials. Click on that. And yes, I know, as you can see, I've been trying to, you know, watch a little bit of money going out the, out the door here. So I did not buy the whole version yet. And I wanted to just show you how this is being uh, done. And this is in no means uh, a product, you know, placement or anything for, for Photomatics, Photo Matrix, or Matrix, Photomatics Essentials. Um, it's just a program that I decided to use for this tutorial. We'll just go continue trial. Now I'm going to click on browse because it doesn't always open up properly. So we're going to open it up this way and uh, click select. And now we have the three pictures we're going to use. We have our, this is our high or, you know, the high exposure. This is our low exposure and this is our normal exposure. So click on next ghosting if you've never heard of ghosting before in HDR the reason ghosting happens is because there's movement in the picture I recently was shooting at a carnival and shooting some HDR pictures and as bringing them in the HDR program I noticed people were moving around and made a lot of ghost type images so if I clicked on yes it would pull all that together but seeing we did this with one picture you can't have ghosting Nobody's going to move from one shot to the next because you created the three shots on your own with one picture. Let's click on no. That will load that up. Let's bring this up. Bring us out a little bit here so we can see what's going on. And now we can see just what we came up with here with those same exposures. Remember, folks, we created our bracketing together. And now you have all those midtones, you got the lows and the highs, and everything pulled together. And you can see here now, you just made an HDR shot. So, showing you in a landscape form is a really good way to show you that you can pull out all this stuff. And it really, really makes a beautiful picture from what we started with, with just that one single image. we can adjust some lighting down here again so I do like the program uh, as I said this is no way an endorsement for you to rush out and buy it I would suggest download the child version try it out I think it's worthwhile so again folks thank you very much for watching this YouTube video and if you're not subscribed to my videos please click the subscribe button and if you'd like to join our Facebook group to share your work with the rest of our group please do so at Facebook
www.jackstechcorner.com. If you'd like to join our Google, our Google group, if you'd like to join our Google Plus group, you can find us at Google. No, I'm sorry. You can find us at plus.jackstechcorner.com. And uh, just click on those, and I will uh, authorize you to come in, and you can be a part of our photography group. I'd like to thank you for watching this video tutorial on creating an HDR with a single shot. And I hope to uh, hope you come back often to watch more of these training videos. I'll see you soon. And until then, keep those shutters clicking, keep the editors editing, and I'll see you back here next time on Jack's Tech Corner. Bye for now.